In this video, we will explore how the inert pair effect influences the type of bonding in group 14 elements. To be more specific, we will see how inert pair effect favors the formation of ionic bonding in heavier elements like lead. Now we know that inert pair effect describes the reluctance or the inertness of the NS electrons to participate in bonding. And this happens because of the poor shielding effect of the intervening d and f orbitals. And it becomes more pronounced as we go down the group. That means it's going to be more significant for lead. Inert pair effect also describes why lead is more stable in the plus 2 oxidation state whereas all of the other group 14 elements are more stable in the group oxidation state which is plus 4. Now the question is, do you think that the inert pair effect can play a role in dictating the type of bonding as well? Well indirectly maybe yes because depending on the oxidation states we know we can predict the type of bonding right? For example. All of the elements of the group 14 in the higher plus 4 oxidation state would prefer covalent bonding whereas the lead which is more stable in plus 2 oxidation state would prefer ionic bonding. Now that would be correct because based on Fajan's rule we know that lower valencies always prefer the formation of ionic bonds whereas higher valencies which in this case is plus 4 would prefer the formation of covalent bonds right. But suppose we didn't know about Fajan's rule. Is there a way to substantiate this preference in bonding using the inert pair effect? Well that's what we are going to try in this video. Ok so to figure out the answer to this let's consider two elements of group 14. One is lead and one is carbon that is one in which inert pair effect is acting and carbon in which no such thing is going on. Alright so let's look at carbon first in detail. So you see carbon has four valence electrons in 2s and 2p orbitals. Now because of the small size of carbon and its high ionization enthalpy, carbon will not want to give away all of these 4 electrons, you know, carbon will not form C4 plus ions, it's extremely unstable and the ionization energy required to form this is also extremely high. So what does it do? It would rather prefer to share these 4 electrons. Now for that one of the 2s electrons will get excited or promoted to the empty 2p orbital. And this gives us 4 unpaired electrons which can hybridize and combine with other unpaired electrons to form 4 covalent bonds. So here we have the example of methane CH4. Because the 2s and 2p orbitals are close in energy, it is easy to excite the 2s electron into the empty 2p orbital. And not just that, energy required for this promotion is more than compensated by the energy released when forming the 2 extra covalent bonds. Now can we do something similar in the case of lead, you know excite the 6s electron and form covalent bonds like this? So pause the video here and think about it for a moment, ok? Ok, let's see. In heavier elements like lead, the inert pair effect comes into play. So what happens here is that the valence 6s and 6p electrons get drawn closer towards the nucleus. That is they experience greater effective nuclear charge due to the poor shielding effect of the f and d orbitals. Now this affects the valence s electrons more than the p electrons. That is 6s experiences more nuclear charge. So because of this the energy difference between 6s and 6p is larger than we would normally expect. And it's definitely larger than the energy difference between the 2s and 2p orbitals of carbon. So that means promoting the 6s electron would require more energy. And even if we somehow excite the 6s electron to the empty 6p orbital, the resulting covalent bond formed does not release enough energy to compensate or may not compensate for the energy required for this promotion. Unlike in the case of carbon where the bonds formed are strong enough to increase the promotion of the 2s electron. Now why are these bonds not as strong as the carbon bonds? Obviously look at the size right, lead is a much bigger atom and as the atomic size increases atoms form longer and weaker bonds and this decreases their bond energy. Thus as carbon forms stronger bonds than lead it is worth exciting or promoting this 2s electron to the 2p orbital as compared to exciting the 6s electron to the empty 6p orbital. So what happens is, instead lead would rather let go of the 2p electrons easily and form pb2 plus ions. Now this formation of pb2 plus is also favored by the low ionization enthalpy. You see the ionization energy required to knock off these two electrons is much lower. 
Now, because the S electrons would rather prefer to remain paired, they are reluctant, you know, to participate in any kind of bonding, be it ionic or covalent. Now, remember, folks, this does not mean that lead forms only ionic compounds. No, here we are simply talking about the role of inert pair effect in understanding why lead prefers to form ionic bonds over covalent bonds. For example, PbCl4 is a covalent compound, whereas PbCl2 is considered to be predominantly ionic in nature. So here lead is in plus 4 oxidation state and here lead is in plus 2 oxidation state, right? And we know that because of inert pair effect, lead is more stable in plus 2 oxidation state. And because of that, at room temperature, PbCl4 easily decomposes to form PbCl2 and chlorine gas. And in this process, it acts as an oxidizing agent. So let's learn more about that in the next video.